my name is Lisa Lade. I'm the Channel Development Manager for Aero in Denmark. We're here at VMworld in Barcelona. This is the first day and there has been some really cool announcements. And I've been so lucky that I have been interviewing Joe Bagley and Duncan Ebbing. Hi, I'm here with Duncan Ebbing. Uh, we just were on VMworld Day 1 and there has been a lot of announcements. One of them is the Visa announcement. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, there's been a there's been a lot of announcement. I think a lot of exciting things sure. uh, the last uh, the last day, or at least this morning. And uh, VSAN, of course, was one of them. So we just announced VSAN 6.5, and um, I think there are two main features in VSAN 6.5. First of all, the iSCSI services. Mm -hmm. So as of VSphere uh, 6.5, VSAN 6.5, we allow you to connect external devices to a VSAN data store. So that means that normally with a VSAN data store, you create a virtual machine, mm -hmm. and that virtual machine is an object. Um, on that vSAN data store, now you can create objects and those objects are exposed as an iSCSI LAN. Mm -hmm. So within vSAN or within vSphere you create a v, uh, vSAN target and within, yep. those uh, within those targets you can create LANs and th those LANs can be connected to external systems. So th those could be physical systems, but for instance you could also use it for Microsoft clustering services. If you have a Microsoft uh, cluster running on top of your vSAN data store and you need a quorum disk, mm -hmm. you can now actually use the iSCSI LAN as a quorum disk for that. So I think um, it's going to be interesting for a lot of people and especially yep. to have that ability to connect from the outside world into vSAN finally is, uh, is interesting. There are many more things that we are testing and hopefully we can, you know, I can tell more about that at the, uh, the upcoming VMAG yep. in, uh, in Denmark. Yes, uh, that would be very nice. That's going to be really good, yeah. November 30th in Copenhagen. Yeah, don't forget about <laughs> that. The, uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting was the, uh, the two node direct connect. Uh, with two, two node direct connect, basically what we allow you to do is instead of using a switch for the vSAN traffic, mm -hmm. typically we prefer to have a 10 gig uh, switch. You can imagine that in a two node configuration, if you have you know 1500 of those out there, mm -hmm. you need to buy 1500 10 gig switches, it's going to become really expensive. Mm -hmm. yes. So what we now allow you to do is directly connect the Ethernet cables to each other. So it's like a cross connect like we had in the past, in the old yep. days. You do the same thing. You, you use an Ethernet cable, plug it into the, one, uh, in, into the 10 gig system at the one hand, in the other, uh, on the other end, and then you'll end up with a vSAN uh, network. Now, of course, you need to have that witness uh, sitting somewhere. That's yep. part of the robo requirements. But at least from a, a vSAN uh, traffic perspective, when it comes to I/O, they will now go over that direct connect link. And on top of that, uh, that's also supported for vMotion. So if you want to use that for vMotion as well, mm -hmm. you can use the same uh, same link uh, link for that. So I think for robo environments, especially you have many smaller sites, mm -hmm. I think there's a big uh, big advantage when it comes to that. Yeah. Now, um, besides that, we also recently announced the beta. I don't know if you heard about the beta. No, just uh, uh, me in. Yeah. yeah, so there are three things that I think that are key pillars uh, in the beta, or actually, uh, actually two. Uh, first of all, um, is the um, uh, the uh, the nested fault domains, as they call it. I think the name is going to change because it's a bit bit misleading. But basically, what we allow you to do is, if you have a stretched vSAN cluster, as it stands mm -hmm. today, you end up with two copies of your data. Yeah. Now, with the, uh, the upcoming uh, beta, what we allow you to do is specify uh, what the, uh, the rate should be within that single fault domain as well. So, okay. so you'll have a split, which means you have a rate one configuration at the top, and then within the site you can say I want to have rate five, rate one, or rate six, and you can specify that per virtual machine. So if you have the desire to stretch your storage across multiple uh, fault domains, multiple sites, you can now also specify what the uh, availability should be within that site. Okay. So that sounds like it's easy to administer, but you have a lot of features coming up. Exactly. So yeah. that sounds cool. A lot of lab environments will uh, test this. Maybe. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure about that. And I think, uh, especially in Europe, we see a lot of people yeah. doing stretch clusters because the distances are relatively short. So I'm, I'm yeah. sure that people will uh, appreciate that. The other feature that we're releasing and uh, or we're working on, I shouldn't be saying releasing because I don't know if it's going to be released no. or not. It's going to be a beta. It may or may not make the, the product, and that depends no. on your feedback, yeah. of course. Exactly. Um, but the other one is encryption. So we're working on native encryption for vSAN. And um, the reason we're doing that, because some of you may have seen the announcements for uh, vSphere 6.5 with vMcrypt, where we have the, uh, the option to encrypt a particular VM through policy. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with that is it's a great solution. You could do it on a per VM basis, but the problem is that if the VM sits here, then the encryption happens here, while yeah. the vSAN data store sits at the bottom. Ah. Now, if you're doing deduplication and compression, that also means that you won't find any duplicate Pay, uh, blocks anymore because we just encrypted the data mm -hmm. it, it became random yeah so chances of you finding a similar block are more or less zero yeah so because of that what we did is we introduced or we're going to introduce in that this beta 
uh, an encryption uh, solution for vSAN in particular, which actually encrypts at the bottom, so at the, the lowest layer. So after the duplication and the compression has been done, that's when we encrypt it and we store it encrypted on the capacity devices. So there's a there's a big advantage, I think, for uh, for, for vSAN users. Yeah. And then there are some other enhancements that we're working, of course, on from a uh, operational perspective. Yeah. I can't mention those no, yet. Of course. But, um, well, yeah, it's think just about, us here. So yeah, that's a good point. So that. think about <laughs> update and, uh, upgrading and, and patching. Yeah. That will be uh, solved. If you, if, you know, if you guys have time, uh, make sure to, uh, to watch the session that Christian Dickman did at, at VMworld. Yeah. He did a session with five or six demos showing him what we we're actually working on as it stands right now to improve uh, updating and patching and driver management and, and, and things like that. So there's a, there's a lot of cool yeah, stuff There's a coming. lot. Of, I saw on Twitter, so it blew up. Oh yeah, um, I can in imagine. In the general session. I can so imagine. that was very cool. I was happy personally as well to yeah. see that happening in Europe. Because yeah, normally we're exactly. always, you know. It was in Europe, not in US. That exactly. was so that very was, uh, good. I think we were all happy about that, and uh, yeah. you know, especially the VMA people in Europe were happy that they, 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 yes. they got the, uh, the scoop this time instead of exactly. you not know, being that, that redheaded uh, stepchild. Yes, exactly. Which, which is good, which is good for cool. a change. Very cool. Okay. So, but thank you for doing this. Uh, no problem. And we'll see each other in uh, Copenhagen in November. Yeah, for sure. So. I hope everyone will show up to my uh, my sessions. And yes. uh, I, I know my colleagues will have a couple of good sessions as well. Lido Worth, uh, Cormac Hogan is going to be there. Yes. Uh, Mike Foley. Foley, David Hill, you know, a couple of really great speakers. I think Joe Bagley is going to yeah. be there as well. No, unfortunately, oh, Joe is doing got, the LAN. Yeah. Yes, but we have Jeremy Van Dorn and oh. we have a security team. So, yeah. And that's right up in the alley with the VSAN announcement maybe and also NSX. So there's some cool stuff going on. Yeah, Jeremy is a great guy. He's, a, he's one of my Dutch colleagues. So yes. uh, looking well, forward to see him Dutch speak again. Because yeah. uh, it's been a, been a while since I've seen yeah. him. So I'm going to see him speaking at yeah. the, uh, the Danish, or I should say the Nordic theme. Nordic, Nordic. We will Sorry have the region in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. Okay, thanks. So, thank you so much for doing this. No so, problem. Bye. Bye.